you ripped it up. Yes. Didn't you think it might be important to save it to show yes. the cops and the detectives? In fact, I am still being threatened yes. by these two people who allegedly committed this crime. Yes, and um, and I absolutely regret that these notes came within days of my arrest, and I think still that I was just very scared for my family. And it's only now that I'm speaking out about this because I just need to have faith that the Lord is not going to put them in harm's way because I decided to, to do, obviously a little late, but I decided to do the right thing and then tell what I knew. Because by, you know, the reason I'm sitting here is because I didn't do the right thing is because I didn't go to the police right away. I didn't call 911 right away. You know, I didn't I didn't go to a neighbor's house. Mark, you want to go first? Yeah, so the first thing I really really love is is about halfway through the incredulity in the interviewer's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> is she really going that way? Is like is that is this really what's happening right now? It's just Brilliant, it's just genius. The other thing I, I love in this one is when is when uh, Arius kind of just goes back in her chair, wide eyed, and goes, "Yes, yes, the cops, yes." Like I knew I should have done. Brilliant, brilliant idea. I knew I should have done that. I knew I should. Again, just trying to make a connection with her. Just trying to make a connection and go. That is brilliant. I should have done that. I knew at the time I was thinking the way you're thinking, but gosh, not quite uh, like you're smart I'm smart I'm not quite as smart as you right now but we're both smart so always trying to play and make those connections um, then we get we get these eyes down but she keeps on locking eye contact on the things she really wants that interviewer and the audience to really know which is scared for my family the idea of faith the Lord the right thing it says it twice again and locks eye contact the right thing police right away so she's now locking eye contact to try and enforce some ideas especially this idea of a of a, of a higher power you know and and doing the right thing and the only reason that she's there is because she did the wrong thing but now she's in fear for her family's life because she's doing the right thing and she has faith that god would not punish the repentant and the righteous and that ultimately is what she's trying to do there is to say i am being repentant and righteous now and therefore my faith is in god that he would never punish that and therefore anybody who is you know believing in god or religious in that way you wouldn't punish me either because this is now you know the work of God, repentance and righteousness. It's extraordinary. It's, it's kind of brilliant. But again, the interviewer quite rightly is there, incredulous at the angle that she's taking on this. What a what a performance. What a performance. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, so I think we're, we're seeing this again. She's saying the words, and, and I regret. And I absolutely regret. And what comes right after? That these notes came within days of my arrest. So there's... I regret, or I'm ashamed of, or I'm embarrassed about, let me give you some evidence. And I'm embarrassed about it, but there's some evidence. Because it has to be true if I'm making some kind of confession of personal uh, admission here and, and opening up to you. So this whole thing is uh, evidence management, perception management, and story management is all we're seeing here. I decided to, to do obviously a little late but I decided to do the right thing let's think about this it's the same story she did with calling the police after she encountered the uh, saw these people attack she didn't call the police right away she got the letter she didn't call the police right away so we're seeing a very similar storyline and if you watch the last one second of the video the last one second you'll see duper's delight the left side of her face tightens up the cheeks raise up and the lower eyelids raise. And it is the quickest micro expression I've ever, I think I've ever seen analyzing a video. I watched it a few times and I had my iPad uh, just like three inches from my face trying to watch it, but it's there. And she fits the sociopath criteria perfectly, except for one thing. 
past behavior younger than the age of 15. She hits all of these major indicators from the DSM-5, which is the psychology manual to diagnose a mental disorder. Past behavior before this incident, unless there's something we drastic that we don't know about yet, she fits all of that. And maybe that shows us a weakness in the DSM in the Diagnostic Manual for Psychology, but maybe this thing is some thing that's going to show us that there's something else going on, which I think is borderline personality disorder. Again, I'm not making a, a diagnosis, nor am I qualified to do so, but I'll leave it at that. And Greg? Yeah, so here she's closing the loop. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, I yes, buy yes. I think she has made contact and she thinks this woman is bought into her. She's reeling her in is what she thinks. Now, she, if she thinks that, she clearly cannot read body language because I agree with you, Mark, right there. Disbelief is all over her face like, really? This is what you got? But she runs down this whole thing and then she does something I could not have imagined possible. She went from this chaff and redirect and all this to holy ground. We need to have faith that the Lord is not going to put them in harm's way. She's become what I call a stancer, what we call a stancer in our true crime workshop case. It's Remember, stancer is a person who's going to take a holy ground stance. As God is my witness, I didn't do that. Boom, 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 boom. She takes holy ground and she comes up. So now she's used stancer, trancer, romancer. She's used insulator. She hasn't used prancer yet, but she'll figure that one out yet, I'm sure, because she's got lots of strategies up in that head of hers. You notice that this is really what I think you're seeing. She does an eye block and then makes eye contact again. That's the connection. She thinks, now I've got this woman. And again, I think she's missing that this woman doesn't believe her story, but she believes that she's falling for it because it's worked for her so many times before. All of us, every one of us talking to you, and you included, are simply a creation of things that have been successful in the past. If you get your knuckles wrapped enough times, you don't do things unless you are into having your knuckles wrapped. But if you are rewarded for something, like you get candy every time you do something, it just becomes part of your repertoire and it compounds and compounds and compounds. And to Chase's point, sometimes it compounds in very negative ways and into pathologies that maybe you wouldn't even know what all of them are. But when we talk about borderline personalities, those are close to pathologies and those kinds of things. So we can't diagnose her, but what we can say is I've talked to a lot of people like her in my past and they always try something like this until you get them to the point where they go, you lied to me. Once you, you bust them and you tell them something and then you use what they tell you against them, they get really, really angry usually afterward. So that's what I'm seeing here. And then uh, I, who's next? Is it Scott? Me. Yeah. So what, we're, so what I'm getting out of this is as she's going along, as she's trying, as she tries to keep up with these people who interview her, she tries to become that person. She re reflects back. She's using the classic yes and, and that's what you do in improv. No matter what somebody says, yes and, and you add something to it. Right out of the gate, she says that as part of her as part of her first answer. Yes, and yes, and um, and then she starts creating again the, this story going along. Y'all have covered most just about everything I've got, um, but then she but then again the classic of falling back on religion, like Mark was talking about, just goes right back in. Now, don't get me wrong, I like I always say I I believe in God. We're very tight, you know, and Jesus loves you, but I'm his favorite. <laughs> and so as we so as I tell you about this, that's that's where I'm sitting on it. So as as she goes in, it's the classic. I know I did wrong, like exactly what you were saying, Mark. I know I did wrong, but now I should be forgiven because I I realize my transgression. I know what I've done. I, I see what's happened here. And it's the classic. You sin, and then you pay the penance for for that sin. Is what's going on. She's saying, so I'm paying that now because, and like, it's not going to be any big deal. That's why I'm in trouble. Shoot, they're going to figure it out because I just did this over here. It's just no big deal. That's actually what I did. Not that big a deal. When it's actually, she's not got a shot of getting out of there. You know, we know that now. But even then, you can see it on her. She's, she's really not that sure. But man, she's trying to sell it that she's going to get out. But that's where we're ending up. She's showing, it's the classic, I'm, I've learned my lesson. And I'm not going to do that anymore because I am right and I am a good person. I just did this one thing wrong over here. So that's what I get.
<laughs> yeah, I think you guys, what you just said ties together nicely because what Chase is saying, she's trading guilt. You know, she's trading down. She's giving you less, something less guiltful. And then she's trading it off saying, look, I did make a mistake and, 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 and then giving you that guilt and saying, my family doesn't deserve to be punished for this. And we'll hear that again later. Yeah. And if, if you're at all interested in what Greg was talking about for what worked for somebody in the past, and this is how all of our habits are formed, whether or not you want to go to the gym more often or eat healthier, all of those things, it happens right around this spot right here in the brain. There's a little spot called the nucleus accumbens. And the nucleus accumbens is a dopamine memorizer. It says, I did this before, it worked out, and I got some dopamine from that, so I'm gonna force the brain to do that again. And it runs dopamine through a channel right here called the ventral tegmental pathway, or the ventral tegmental area. And that goes back and forth in the limbic system and forces a cycle that even at the age of eight or nine, if a behavior worked, you're more likely to repeat it. Even at the age of 55, sitting in an interrogation room, you'll do the same thing that worked for you when you were young because of that little spot called the nucleus accumbens, if you want to go look it up. And it doesn't That's, matter whether that was a bad or a good thing, depends on whether you right. perceived it as a good thing. Right. And that's why we love our phones so much, because we get that feeling that searching out, finding the thing, and we keep going back to it and going back to it and go back to it. The like thing, all that stuff is based on what Chase was just talking about. It's, it's, if you're into that kind of thing, again, yeah, Google that. It's a fantastic story. So go like what we're talking about, and you'll get a reward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hit like. <laughs> You ripped it up. Yes. Didn't you think it might be important to save it to show yes. the cops and the detectives? In fact, I am still being threatened yes. by these two people who allegedly committed this crime. Yes, and um, and I absolutely regret that these notes came within days of my arrest, and I think still that I was just very scared for my family. And it's only now that I'm speaking out about this because I just need to have faith that the Lord is not going to put them in harm's way because I decided to, to do, obviously a little late, but I decided to do the right thing and, and tell what I knew. Because by, you know, the reason I'm sitting here is because I didn't do the right thing, is because I didn't go to the police right away. I didn't call 911 right away. You know, I didn't, I didn't go to a neighbor's house. If you like this video, Get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.